this video, we're going to cover fatty acid synthesis. So by the end of this video, you'll understand the starting requirements for fatty acid synthesis and the reactions involved. So let's get started with a recap on lipids. So we have the structure of a simple lipid here, three fatty acid chains bound to glycerol, and this is triacyl glycerol. And lipids are an ideal energy storage because they are neutral which means they have no ionizable groups, they are insoluble in water and inert in storage. We can obtain fatty acids from our diet, release them from stored lipids, which we covered in the fatty acid mobilization and transport lecture, or we can synthesize them, which is our main focus in this lecture. So now let's subtract complexity by going through the main requirements for fatty acid synthesis. Okay. So here's a 16 carbon saturated fatty acid. And to synthesize fatty acid, we need malonyl CoA, which is formed from acetyl CoA and bicarbonate. And this is catalyzed by acetyl CoA carboxylase. We also need acetyl CoA and the enzyme fatty acid synthase and the electron donor NADPH. So fatty acid synthesis takes place in the cytoplasm, and it occurs in the repeating reaction sequence, which involves four main steps per cycle. So it's quite similar to fatty acid oxidation, the removal of successive two carbon units in the form of acetyl-CoA, and it proceeded from the carboxyl end of the fatty acid. So in fatty acid synthesis, it is extending by two carbon atoms per cycle, and the direction of synthesis is in the opposite direction. Okay, so the first acyl group is from the acetyl group of acetyl-CoA, and then the subsequent acyls are from the malonyl group of malonyl-CoA. So what I've done here is I've highlighted the acetyl group as yellow, the malonyl as purple, and the carbon dioxide from bicarbonate as green. So as we go along, you can see what's happening to each of these groups. Okay, so let's go through, let's break down how fatty acid is synthesized. The enzyme catalyzing this process is fatty acid synthase, and it's a four-step sequence per cycle. So every cycle, we're going to be extending the fatty acid by two carbon atoms. And there are two types of fatty acid synthase. So fatty acid one, which is found in vertebrates and fungi, and fatty acid synthase 2, which is found in plants and bacteria. And we're going to be focusing on fatty acid synthase 1, which is a polypeptide that has linked enzymes. So let's break down fatty acid synthase 1. So this polypeptide contains active sites for these enzymes located in different domains. So we have the KS domain, which is beta keto acyl ACP. We have malonyl acetyl CoA ACP transferase, which is MAT. We have beta hydroxy acyl ACP dehydratase, or DH. We have enol CoA enol ACP reductase, ER. Beta keto acyl ACP reductase, KR. And we have ACP, and this is the acyl carrier protein. And then we also have thioesterase, or TE, that releases the palmitate product from ACP when synthesis is completed. Okay, so this is quite, is, this is quite confusing right now, but as we go through the lecture, you're going to understand what these enzymes located in different domains do. Okay, we're going to be highlighting each of these domains and what their role is in fatty acid synthesis. Okay, so what happens is as the chain grows, they are going to be bonded to one of thiol groups. One side is the thiol group of a cis residue of the KS domain. Okay, so KS, beta, keto, acyl, ACP synthase. And the other is the thiol group of ACP. So recall in the citric acid lecture, I mentioned how thioester bonds have a high standard free energy of hydrolysis. So an advantage of thioesters is that when it undergoes hydrolysis, it's highly exergonic and it releases energy. And this reaction is going to assist steps one and five of fatty acid synthesis, which you're going to see. Okay, so before we can start, let's go through this, let's break this down. 
Before we can start the actual four step process of growing this chain, we need to do a few things first. So, first of all, we need to charge this complex with an acetyl group and malonyl group so it's ready for fatty acid synthesis. The first acyl group from acetyl CoA is going to be transferred to ACP by, mal by malonyl acetyl CoA ACP transferase, or the MAT domain. The acetyl group is then transferred to beta ketoacyl ACP synthase, or the KS domain, and this is also catalyzed by malonyl acetyl CoA ACP transferase. So that's the first reaction. The second reaction is transferring the malonyl group from malonyl CoA to ACP, and this is catalyzed by malonyl acetyl CoA ACP transferase. So, what I've done here is I've highlighted the domain that is catalyzing the next step or the next reaction. So, the MAT domain here is highlighted because it's catalyzing the transfer of the malonyl group to ACP. So now the complex is charged with an acetyl and a malonyl group. So it's ready for the process of fatty acid synthesis. Okay, so before we can proceed with fatty acid synthesis, we first need to charge the complex. Okay, so now the complex is charged with an acetyl and a malonyl group. So it's ready for the process of fatty acid synthesis. So let's go through the reactions and the steps involved. So we have the complex here, just slightly smaller. The first step is a condensation reaction of the acetyl and malonyl groups to produce acetyl acetyl ACP. And at the same time, carbon dioxide is also going to be produced. So this is from the bicarbonate in the acetyl-CoA carboxylase reaction when we formed malonyl-CoA. And this is catalyzed by beta keto acyl ACP synthase, or the KS domain. What's happening here is the acetyl group is being transferred from the enzyme to the malonyl group on the thiol group of ACP. So the carbon in this carbon dioxide is the same carbon in the malonyl CoA from bicarbonate in the acetyl CoA carboxylase reaction. So just keep that in mind. And then from here, the second step is a reduction reaction. So the acetyl acetyl ACP is going to form beta hydroxy butyl ACP via a reduction reaction, which is catalyzed by beta keto acyl ACP reductase, or the KR domain. And the electron donor here is NADPH. So in the previous reaction, carbon 3 has a double bond. So now it undergoes reduction with NADPH being the electron donor. Then in the next step, it's going to undergo a dehydration reaction. So we're going to be removing water and forming a double bond trans delta 2 butanoyl ACP. And the enzyme catalyzing this step is beta hydroxyacyl ACP dehydratase, or the DH domain. So the DH domain is highlighted here because it's catalyzing step 3. Okay, so then in step four, there is a reduction of the double bond. So NADPH being the electron donor yielding NADP plus and butyl ACP. And this is catalyzed by enol ACP reductase or ER. So the double bond is gone. It's now saturated and we have lengthened the chain by two carbons. So now we have a four carbon fatty acyl ACP, which is saturated. So now the cycle will start over again and continuing to lengthen the chain by two carbon atoms per cycle. Now, before the cycle repeats itself, the butyl group is going to be transferred onto the KS site. And so now it can attach another malonyl group to the thiol group of ACP. Okay, so we've just completed cycle one of fatty acid synthesis. We brought in the acetyl group from acetyl CoA as the first acyl, and then the malonyl group for subsequent acyls. So now for the remaining cycles, we're just going to be using the malonyl group, and each time it's transferred in, carbon dioxide will be produced, and recall that this is from the bicarbonate, and then the fatty acid 
will be released by thioesterase or the TE dermane. And when it does this, the thioester linkage will be hydrolyzed. So we'll be using water. Okay, so let's step back and let's apply this to the fatty acid palmitate, which is a 16 carbon chain. So let's put this into context. So palmitate, okay, it undergoes seven cycles of condensation and reduction and all of the steps that we've just covered. And in each cycle, the chain will be extended by two carbons and it's still going to be bound to ACP. Once palmitate is formed, it's going to be released from ACP by thioesterase or the TE dermane. So the overall seven cycles of palmitate synthesis, let's go through this, let's summarize this. First, we need seven malonyl-CoA. We need seven acetyl-CoA to make malonyl-CoA. But remember the first acyl group is from acetyl-CoA. So then the total acetyl-CoA we need is eight, okay, to produce palmitate. We also require carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonate. And we also need seven ATP. So the electron donor was NADPH. And see how there's only six water in this reaction? That's because when the palmitate is being released by thioesterase or the TE domain, the thioester linkage is being hydrolyzed. Okay, so that was a lot. So let's step back and do a quick recap of what we've just covered using palmitate as an example. So acetyl-CoA is the first acyl group and then the malonyl group is transferred to ACP. Recall that we need to charge the complex with an acetyl and malonyl group before we can continue with fatty acid synthesis. And once we've charged the complex with an acetyl and malonyl group, there are four main steps of fatty acid synthesis. And each cycle, we're going to be lengthening the fatty acid chain by two carbons, releasing carbon dioxide in the process. After the four steps, the butyl group is going to be transferred onto the KS domain. So now the complex can attach another malonyl group to the complex, repeating the cycle again. And as each cycle occurs, we're going to be extending the fatty acid by two carbons and we're going to be releasing carbon dioxide. And remember that the first acyl group is from the acetyl group of acetyl CoA, and then the subsequent acyls is from the malonyl group of malonyl CoA. Once palmitate is formed, it's released from ACP by thioesterase. So that is fatty acid synthesis and it occurs in the cytoplasm. Now we have a slight issue here and that is the acetyl-CoA used in fatty acid synthesis comes from within mitochondria. From various processes and precursors such as pyruvate oxidation and catabolism of amino acids. So let's go through where we obtain acetyl-CoA to use in fatty acid synthesis. So recall back to the citric acid cycle lecture. When we oxidize pyruvate, pyruvate is transported into the mitochondrial matrix by the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier, or MPC, where it's converted to acetyl-CoA by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So we produced acetyl-CoA in the matrix, but fatty acid synthesis occurs in the cytoplasm, and we can't transport acetyl-CoA back to the cytosol because it's impermeable to acetyl-CoA, so it requires a shuttle, okay, so that we can transport it back to the cytosol, and that is through the citrate shuttle. So let's go through this. So acetyl-CoA reacts with oxaloacetate to produce citrate. This is catalyzed by citrate synthase, so we're removing the CoA group, and then citrate can pass through via the citrate transporter in the inner membrane and move across to the cytosol. Once it's in the cytosol, citrate is going to be transformed back to oxaloacetate by citrate lyase forming acetyl-CoA. So now we can use acetyl-CoA for fatty acid synthesis. And this reaction requires ATP and of course the addition of CoA, okay, because we're creating acetyl-CoA. So now that we've produced acetyl-CoA, and that's how it's transported back to the cytosol through the citrate shuttle, we can now use this acetyl-CoA for fatty acid synthesis. But our, our issue doesn't stop there, okay? Another requirement of fatty acid synthesis is NADPH, which serves as the electron donor. So let's go through 
where the cell obtains sources of NADPH. The oxaloacetate produced in the cytosol cannot be transported back to the matrix because we don't have a transporter for it. So the oxaloacetate is going to be converted to malate by malate dehydrogenase. So remember when you hear dehydrogenase involved, it should signal to you that NAD plus is involved. So NADH is oxidized to NAD plus, and now malate can freely go back to the matrix via the malate alpha ketoglutarate transporter, where it can be converted back into oxaloacetate again with malate dehydrogenase being the enzyme, and it can now participate in the citrate shuttle again. However, systolic malate is used to produce NADPH needed for fatty acid synthesis. So the malate here is converted to pyruvate by the malic enzyme and produce NADPH. Now the NADPH produced in this reaction is about half of the NADPH needed for fatty acid synthesis. And the other half is produced by the pentose phosphate pathway. Okay, so now that we've obtained the NADPH, the electron donor that we need for fatty acid synthesis. But let's not leave pyruvate hanging here. What happens to it? Okay, so pyruvate is transported back into the matrix by the pyruvate transporter, and it can be converted to oxaloacetate by the pyruvate carboxylase enzyme. And this reaction requires ATP. And so once we've produced oxaloacetate, oxaloacetate can participate in the citrate shuttle again. Now taking a look at the citrate shuttle here, we can see that 2 ATP is used for every acetyl-CoA that is produced for fatty acid synthesis. And so this is the citrate shuttle. This is what's used to transport acetyl-CoA from the matrix to the cytosol. And also the NADPH, the electron donor we need, is produced from the malic enzyme reaction. And that's only one half of the NADPH we need. The other half comes from the pentose phosphate pathway. So that is fatty acid synthesis. In this lecture, we learned what the main requirements are. Acetyl-CoA, malonyl-CoA, the enzyme fatty acid synthase, and the electron donor NADPH. We learned that the first acyl is from the acetyl group of acetyl-CoA and that the subsequent acyls are from the malonyl group of malonyl CoA. We broke down how we obtain acetyl CoA needed for fatty acid synthesis and how it's transported from the matrix back to the cytosol via the citrate shuttle, and also where the cell obtains NADPH, which is from the malic enzyme reaction and the pentose phosphate pathway. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating!